Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. Welcome. Thanks for tuning in to our live stream service. Uh, I look forward to sharing this time with you this morning and hope the service is uh, helpful and beneficial and uh, we get to look at this passage of scripture and dive into it today. Our scripture passage is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 35 to 41. And it says, That day when the evening came, Jesus said to the other disciples, let us go over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. And there were also other boats with him. And a furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. And Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. And the disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Jesus got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Be quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. Jesus said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? And do you still have no faith? Well, they were terrified, and they asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. May God add his blessing to our reading and hearing and understanding of his word. You know, there's a lot of fear in the Bible. <laughs> Heck, there's a, a lot of fear everywhere. And for good reason, uh, we see all around us things to be afraid of. There's a lot out there that's scary. In our passage today, Jesus asked the fellow boat travelers, why are you so afraid? In the passage that we're going to look at next Sunday, in Mark chapter 5, Jesus asked a young man the same question, why are you so afraid? You know, come to think of it, Jesus spends a lot of time with people's fears. The fear of storms, in this case, the fear of death, which we're going to look at next week, the fear of disease, the fear of demons, the fear of other people, the fear of abandonment. So I want to ask this morning, what is your biggest fear? What keeps you up at night? Now I'm guessing that for most of us, that's a that's a two-part question. <laughs> Most of us could call out the one thing uh, that we're afraid of that's a forever fear, like fear of snakes, fear of spiders, fear of flying, fear of public speaking, fear of losing our password. But what I'm also going to guess is that many of us also have a present fear. And it might be different from a fear we had a couple of weeks ago, and it might be different still than a fear that we have a couple of weeks from now. Uh, a fear of that thing that's going on with our child or our parent or our best friend. The fear of the doctor's visit that we have later in the week. 
the fear of the job interview that we have on Friday, the fear of how our spouse is going to react to the conversation that we need to have with them later. And it's kind of what I talked about a little earlier, about there being a lot of fear. It seems that fear is a constant companion in our lives. And I think that that's exactly what Jesus is addressing with this trip, boat trip on the seas. And I think that his answers and his dealing with these questions and asking the disciples these questions are an attempt to try to help them get beyond those fears and also an attempt to help us get beyond the fears that we have. And so Mark's recreation of this scene on the water and the questions that are asked hopefully will be a big help to us today. So let's jump into it. Let's take a look at it. The storm is out of control. Jesus is asleep, and the disciples are curious about that. They don't want to wake him. They keep looking at each other. Who's going to wake him? They, they wonder why he's not waking up. The Scripture says that the waves are washing over the boat. You'd think the water splashing on his head and his face would wake him up, but it doesn't. He continues to sleep. The disciples are wondering, how in the world can anybody sleep through a storm like this? Well, finally, they can't wait any longer. So they wake Jesus, and they ask an interesting question. They say, don't you care that we are drowning. Other versions say, don't you care that we are perishing? It's not, don't you care that we might drown or perish? It's, don't you care that we are? We're in the act already (laughs) of perishing and drowning. And you know, I, I think that's a question that you and I get a lot too. Someone comes to us that has a problem. They have a fear. They're working through some fear, struggle, battle in their life, and they tell us about it, and, and, uh, and then they look to us, and when we don't respond in the way they hoped or expected, they look at us, kind of get grumbly-faced, and they say, don't you care? Why don't you care? Well, In this passage, of course Jesus cares. Of course he cares. Uh, Turn back to John 3.16 and read that. You'll see that that he cares. In fact, go back and read everything up till now in the Old and New Testament. You see that God cares. You see that Jesus does care for us. That's the whole reason that he's here. But isn't that still the question that we have? Isn't that the question that's behind all of the why questions that we have of God? Why do you let people suffer? Don't you care? Why don't you act? Don't you care? Why is this happening? Don't you care? We ask God, Jesus, don't you care? Can't you see us? Don't you see what's happening here? Don't you see me? Am I invisible? Why don't you intervene? You know, but, but what's interesting about all of that and the disciples' response and their question is the logic that we have as humans behind that question. If you cared, you would fill in the blank. If you cared, you would do what we demand, what we command, what we expect, what we want you to do. If you cared about us, you would do what we want you to do to solve our problem. We base the proof of God's compassion on our expectations. And that's just not helpful. In fact, that's really bad theology. In fact, that's also not fair to God or to Jesus. It isn't fair to our child or our parent or our spouse or our friend. It seems that Jesus, in fact, knows that the question being asked of him is being asked in a time of panic. And so, He just doesn't address it. He doesn't go there at all. He doesn't get sucked into that conversation. He simply stands up, 
Do you notice that? He simply stands up and says to the wind, be still, and to the waves, be calm. Wow. The disciples look at each other. Wow, that was crazy. Did you see that? And so I guess the question I would have to ask the disciples at that point is, does that prove that he cares? I mean, he did what you wanted him to do, so does that mean that he cares? You didn't think that he cared before, but now you think he cares because he did what you wanted him to do. Would they say, oh, now look, he does care about us. He did what we wanted. He calmed the storm. So I guess that Jesus does care about us. But it's interesting then that the focus of the passage turns to two questions that Jesus asks. Jesus asks, why are you afraid? And then he says, have you no faith? Why are you afraid and have you no faith? You know, in answer to the first question, my response would be, because we're human. (laughs) Because we're human. We're in the middle of a boat, in the middle of a sea. There's a giant storm. I'm afraid because I'm human and I could die and I don't have the power that you have to calm the storm. So, I'm human. To the second question, don't you have any faith? I would sort of scratch my head and I would say, you really don't? expect us to be able to stand in the middle of a storm and tell the waves and the wind to stop? Is that really your expectation of us, uh, the disciples at this point in our journey of faith? Well, kind of as an aside, parenthetically, just to be clear, Jesus does not expect them or you to stand out in the middle of a storm and say stop. That's not behind Jesus' question. That's not what he's asking the disciples. Jesus has something else in mind. Remember back at the beginning of our conversation, there's a lot of fear. We live in fear. Fear is a constant companion in our lives. If it isn't the snakes and the spiders and the flying and the speaking kind of fear then it's the constant daily drama that we get caught up in. Our own fears and other people's fears who get all knotted up and all panicky because of what's going on and they can't find the answer to and nobody seems to be stepping forward to calm the storm. And I think that's what Jesus is trying to address here with both his questions and the answer to the disciples' question. Jesus says, Yes, of course I care. I care. Of course I care. And you'll see in a few years when I'm hanging on the cross that I care. And you'll see even more when I walk out of the tomb after a couple of days that I care. I care. I care about you even more than you care about yourself. But I care that you live in a state of fear when you could live in a state of peace. And that's where I want to move you to. And that's what this teaching is all about. If you go back to the beginning of the fourth chapter, everything is about his teaching. He's teaching us. He's teaching the disciples. He's trying to move us from where we are with very little faith to a place of great faith. When Jesus says, why are you afraid and why don't you have faith? I think that he's saying your faith, when it's better developed, will allow you to live your life without being in a constant state of fear. You could live better. You could live healthier. You could live happier if you would follow me. Jesus, see, see, Jesus isn't focused on the storm. He's focused on what's way beyond the storm. Jesus isn't focused on the cancer. He's focused on what's way beyond the cancer. Jesus isn't focused on death. He's focused on what's way beyond death. 
Jesus isn't focused on betrayal. He's focused on way beyond the betrayal. He, he isn't focused on rejection. His focus is way beyond the rejection. This morning we're singing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear if I'm leaning on His Everlasting Arms? arms. At the end of the scripture, the disciples don't know what, quite what to say, do they? Who is this? Who is this? He does care, and my goodness, what a lot of faith he has. And so to, to answer our question, if, if Jesus didn't expect the disciples to call down the waves, what does Jesus expect? What is he asking? What is he asking of you and me? What is he asking of the disciples? When he questions them about their lack of faith, what is it that he is wanting? Well, I'm going to take a guess. I'm going to take a stab at it. I hope that, that you'll spend some time with this passage and, and do the, th the same. I think that he's asking us to lean into our fears. I think he wants us to acknowledge them. I think he wants to help us bring them to the light. I think he wants us to be honest about them to ourselves and to others that we trust. When we say, this makes me afraid, I'm fearful about fill in the blank. Um, when we stand in the midst of that fear and acknowledge it, we take its power away. When we stand in the midst of that fear and call it down through the power of the Holy Spirit and Christ living in, us, living in us, we bring that fear into the light. And once it's into the light, it's exposed for what it is and it, it loses its hold on us. Fear is fueled by the way we keep it secret by the way we hide it. And when we bring that fear into the light, we take away its grasp and its hold on us. And you know what? When we do that, when the folks around us see us living in that kind of way, they'll say with the disciples what, they, what the disciples said about Jesus. They'll say about us, who is this? Who is this that can stand in the midst of the struggle and the battle and the fears that they're battling with such courage and such conviction and such faith and be at such peace? Who is this? And we'll know it's not us. It, it's not us. It's not our power. It's not our strength. But it's the power of of the Holy Spirit living in us through Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, and I think that's exactly what Jesus is after on this boat ride. Jesus does care. We don't have to focus on the fear. We can focus on the fact that Jesus is already in the boat with us. And he, if he is with us, we don't have to fear. It doesn't mean that Jesus will always do what we want him to do, but we can be at peace. What have I to fear? What have I to dread? Leaning on the everlasting arms. Let us pray. Gracious and blessed God, we give you thanks for the opportunity to, uh, to jump into your word, to hear this story, God. We, we pray and, and, and recognize that, that so often we're out there running around scared to death of things that, that, uh, that we need to turn over to you, that we need to bring into the light, that, that we're, we keep hidden, we keep secret. And because we keep them secret and hidden, they have a power over us that if we brought them into the light, they wouldn't.
I pray this morning for folks that are struggling with a particular fear, a a particular event that's taken place in their lives, something they're scared about, something they don't know the outcome to and, and are having trouble turning that over to you. I pray, God, that you'll give them courage, that you'll give us wisdom, that you'll give us guidance as we bring these fears into the light, into your eternal light. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, Just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 1115 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, Thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith, and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online. My hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church. And we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life. And my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us.